The other day, I was reading some release materials from KDE and then from GNOME. And in both of those press releases and and websites about their new launches of the K desktop environment, the cool desktop environment, never let the KDE folks forget that the K stands for cool spelled with a K. That literally is what it stands for. Never let them forget that. Um, I was reading some of their press releases and materials, and in both of them, they talked about how their newest releases of KDE and GNOME made it easier than ever to browse your files. Never, never before in the history of mankind has it been so easy to browse your files. And they use screenshots of their file browsers that to me didn't look like any, I I didn't understand. I'm like, what are you talking about? The easier than ever. How, when was the last time you, me, or anyone else had a really hard time browsing our files on our computer? I mean, shoot. I had software for DOS that made browsing files on my computer pretty gosh darn easy. On old Amigas and Macintoshes and old Windows machines, it was, it was fine. It was just fine. And, and, and that got me going down a road. I'm like, well, am I misremembering that? Am I putting on my rose-colored glasses and and thinking about all these old operating systems in ways that they really weren't? Was it really hard to browse my files on old Macs and whatnot? So I booted up every emulator I own, which, you know, is me. I've got emulators of everything. And yeah, it was fine to do them all. And then that got me looking at this. This is Mac OS 9. Uh, specifically, let's bring this up here. This is Mac OS 9.2.1, right? So that's uh, kind of the end of the classic Mac line. Before Mac OS X and Next Step and Open Step and all that really took over the Mac world, this was kind of the, the end of it. Now, I'm running it here in an uh, in emulator. It's running in QEMU. And uh, I wanted to show you a few things here. And the reason I wanted to show these to you is to put into perspective how little progress computing really has made in terms of improving on the user interfaces of using our computers. Because Windows and Mac OS and GNOME and KDE and all these systems, they've all claimed repeatedly that, oh, it's better than ever. It has never been so easy to copy some files. It's never been so easy to launch an application. And I wanted to show that 20-ish years ago, let's see, what's the the date on this? This is uh, uh, 2001 is when this last point update came out. Though this interface has been essentially completely unchanged for many years up until this point. But so over two decades, over two decades ago, we had this. And the, I, you'll notice I have installed a number of applications here, many of which I worked on. Uh, so all of these applications here are Microsoft applications, Office and Internet Explorer. I worked on the Microsoft Office for Macintosh team back during this period of time uh, when we shipped these. Uh, but I wanted to show you first file browsing on an old Mac. Well, well, there's multiple views. You have this, so you can have your, your, your icons and, and big old icons and, and browsing around and it works, looks all fine. But you can also view them in a nice sortable list view that you can sort by date or size or name or, or what have you. And then you launch things just by double clicking on them and you're like, oh my gosh, it works. And it, it works just fine. Now, was that difficult to do? No, no, it wasn't. How about if I want to copy something from this hard, this folder over to the desktop? Oh my gosh, I just did that. I, let me slow it down so you guys can see that again. I, I, I grabbed it and I, and I put it over here. Oh my gosh. Now see, this is the thing I'm talking about. It really hasn't improved any. KDE and GNOME, are, are they better at launching applications and, and copying around and managing your files than we were back in Mac OS 9 days? Windows 3.1 days? Amiga Workbench 1.3 days? No, 
No, I would posit to say any improvements have been minor. Maybe maybe a few things look a little nicer. Maybe they include a few extra bells and whistles. But realistically, uh, there, there's a whole heck of a lot of functionality, right? Finding and searching and printing and screenshotting. And it's, it's all here. So when all these desktop environments and operating systems are touting their latest and greatest, they're not really providing us with much of anything. I mean, sometimes it's that they can take advantage of higher resolution screens. Well, okay, well, that's legit. I mean, we have more higher resolution hardware and better GPUs and more memory in our machines to be able to handle higher resolutions nowadays. And that's legit. I mean, that, that's, that's a fair reason to have a new software upgrade. But let's look at, like, for example, the Office Suite. This is Microsoft Word. Okay, I'm gonna create a new Word document here. This is Microsoft. Hey, look at the little guy. Look at, look at the little guy down there in the corner. He's like, hello. Oh, what would you like to do? Oh, that's, that's our version of Clippy there. Um, what we have here is an office suite. We have a word processor that is Flexible, customizable, you can drag things around and put them wherever you like. I can get rid of this formatting palette here entirely. I can just close it and get rid of it if I don't. Let's just close it. I mean, I have tons of functionality here, but boom, I don't want it anymore. It's gone. <laughs> I can bring it back if I want it. I have a full featured office suite here that handles just, just shoot. How many, how many different types of, of, of File formats as it handle? Well, a whole bunch of them, from web pages to different versions of, of Word and rich text and, and all sorts of things. Now, as we release new versions of Word processors, does it make sense to do more? Yes, of course it does. Does it make sense to support more file formats? Yeah, absolutely. But when you go load up LibreOffice, when you go load up Microsoft Office or Apple Pages, do you have sig significantly more functionality that you actually use every day than we had here? I would posit to say no. And here's the thing. Here, we did not have a ton of functionality that we didn't already have five and 10 years earlier. Now, in, in my mind, there are a significant amount of, of functionality that we gained throughout the late 90s in terms of resolution and color depth, um, the ability to, to, to handle larger file sizes and whatnot that did make a significant impact on the usability of our system. Beep. But beyond that, there's really not a whole heck of a lot. I mean, let's load up Microsoft Excel. Let's start a new Excel workbook here. It's full on Excel with charts and, and all sorts of stuff all over the place. You want to, want to put, in a, put in a chart? You can, you can put in all sorts of different kinds of charts. Can you do stuff in current versions of Google Sheets, Microsoft Excel, and whatnot that you couldn't do back then 20 plus, almost, almost a quarter century ago. We're talking this, so this version here, this is Microsoft Excel 2001, which came out in the year 2000, which we were building this a quarter of a century ago. I was working on this a quarter of a century ago. Almost everything that most people who use Excel, and we're talking accountants and people who really use Excel, use nowadays existed here a quarter of a century ago in a very easy to use, solid way. Beep. <laughs> Mac noises, right? And so when I keep seeing all these new, you'll notice that the Lunduk Journal doesn't do a whole lot of reviews of new releases of, of a new desktop environment, a new operating system, a new office. We, we don't do a lot of those reviews anymore. I used to. But then I, I slowly started realizing, and, and this gets reinforced almost every day, that there's not a lot new to review that's actually being made. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's good that we've come to a point where where all the stuff that we've had here 
right? Here's, here's Internet Explorer. <laughs> security failure, security server reply invalid because you use an old web browser, it, the web in, immediately stops working. Let's load up frog find because that actually works. But you go to newer software and yeah, you can use the newer modern internet. But outside of that, there's not much I can't do. So I, I really sit and think about this for a second. Video, live video editing and compositing. That's something a bit newer, right? That's something that's, that works a little better now. Now, sure, you could do a certain level of live video back in the, uh, the 90s with things like uh, Mega Video Toaster, and there were some video add-on cards that you could get for Macintoshes and, and, and IBM PCs and all sorts of things that you could do some of that stuff, but not to the level that, for example, I'm doing right here, right now. So to have newer machines and software, that is new functionality. That makes sense. To do, let's say I write articles. Is there anything, anything about the new software, LibreOffice, Google Docs, Microsoft Word, any of it, that is going to significantly impact my ability to, to write books and articles and everything else that I didn't have a quarter of a century ago. No, 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 no. Everything I have on this little emulated machine here, I want to load up Microsoft Word. It's going to work just fine. This right here will do everything I need. Now, modern web changes so drastically, so constantly, it completely makes all old software, meaning just a few years old, completely non-functional when it comes to dealing with the web. Does that mean that I have new functionality I didn't have before? To some degree. Does that mean that I can do things now that I couldn't do five, 10 years ago on the web? No, no, not really. Not really, not in practical terms. The big difference is really newer versions of SSL and updated versions of CSS and whatnot that make new web browsers required in order to use the internet. Otherwise, I could keep doing this. For, for example, I've got this little application here called Classilla, Classilla, Classic Mozilla. And this is going to load up what is essentially an older version of Firefox ported over to Mac OS 9. Now, even with this, it's using somewhat outdated versions of SSL and whatnot. So even though I have a fairly modern browser here, I still can't go to say, like, for example, let's go to lunduke.locals.com. Well, here we go. Watch the, butt, watch, the, watch the errors fly. It's loading. It's thinking about it. Oh, it's getting there. Oh, could not communicate securely. And you want to know the really bad part? It's going to have that over and over and over again. Close, quit. Whew, Whew that was close. It, it was going to do that for like 80 million more times. But are there, is there anything I can't do here really for most of my work outside of the video video work that I do, outside of the video stuff, the stuff that requires the new hardware capabilities of my computers that I couldn't do back then. No, no, there isn't. Absolutely not. If, if I could bring this exact operating system and many others, Windows 3.1, Amiga Workbench 3, a variety of different op Atari Multitask. If I brought them forward, put them on new hardware that had more RAM, a little more CPU, not even necessarily a lot, a little more CPU, a little more GPU, so that I could handle things like video compositing and larger document and, and, and larger resolution sizes, what couldn't I do if you gave me, say, an updated web browser? Well, nothing, nothing. These systems would work just fine. Uh, just literally just fine. And that's with all of the shortcomings of Mac OS 9.2. It has some significant shortcomings. But yet, realistically, from a workflow, from a usability standpoint, and from a capability standpoint, there's not a whole lot here that, or not a whole lot in the new systems that we didn't already have here. 
And so when I when I see KDE and Gnome and 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 the proprietary guys from Apple and Microsoft all claiming that they've made file browsing easier than ever, no, you didn't. We have made it easier and easier to find your web pages. No, 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 you didn't. You, you really didn't. And I, I, I know you want to say it's so great because it's brand new, but it's not. It's really not. Now, again, there are some issues with this. There, there, this is not a perfect system. I'm not suggesting, not even by a little bit, that computing should get to this point or Windows 3.1 or Windows 2000 even, which I am a big fan of, <laughs> and stop. I, I, I'm not suggesting that. But... What I am going to say is this. Many of these systems, GNOME, KDE, Windows, Mac, all of them, they spend a huge amount of time iterating and changing on things where they are not actually giving us anything new. They are not doing something new. What they tend to be doing is taking something old, like a file browser, and modifying it ever so slightly to have a slightly different layout, a slightly different button look, a little more flat, a little more 3D, some gradients, no, no gradients at all, minor changes, and then rewriting them because, oh, we had so much legacy code, we got to rewrite our display thing and we got to rewrite our file browser. And in the end, what we have is well, nothing new. Nothing that is actually easier to use. That is actually more powerful. I'm a little disappointed in that. Because there was a time when you look at computing history, there have always been people who were like me. Fuddy-duddies. Old grumps. People who walk outside and old man yells at cloud. There's always been us, right? Back in the back in the 80s, there was there was people like me with real big neck beards, and they were yelling at the clouds because people were moving away from their Unix systems towards DOS and all oh, Windows and Macintoshes and Amigas and all these sorts of things. And get away from me with those mice and those buttons, right? There's always been us. But at the very least, new things were being tried and done. New, brand new ways of interacting with the desktop. New ways of interacting with our computer. New paradigms to use, like the desktop entirely. New functionality was being added. New stuff. Pushing it forward. If not making it easier to use, then making it revolutionary, exciting, interesting. GNOME, KDE, Windows, Mac, they continue to miss opportunities. I, I used uh, the latest version of Microsoft Windows 47 the other day, Microsoft Windows 11. And it's not bad. It's not as bad as I wanted to think it was. But it's not, it's not exciting. Did it work a little bit better than the previous release? Hey, you know what? A little bit. It did. It did. Did it work better than any version of Windows ever? No. No, it didn't. Did it look better than any version of Windows ever? N no. I mean, that's subjective, but no, not really. I mean, it looked a little bit different than other versions of Windows, but that doesn't necessarily mean better or worse. And if, if you were to say, oh, well, it's best ever, and this is, this is the way it should look, okay, so then never change it again. Make it look like this forever. But they won't. They will constantly be chasing look and feel fads that don't change the actual workflow in a positive and noteworthy way. I find that I end up having to click more buttons now on modern operating systems than I did on the older operating systems. I find that things are less simple, right? Now I've got this machine right here. Is it perfect? No. This, this Macintosh here, not perfect, not at all underpowered in many ways, but from a workflow, a usability and a feature set point of view, I don't know. I, I would put it toe to toe against all of the major modern operating systems and say, prove, prove that your new GNOME or KDE file browser is significantly easier to use and wildly more powerful 
than this because you've had a quarter of a century to improve upon that. Did you? I don't think so. But you've re-implemented your file browser a good dozen times since then, over and over and over again. And that's fine. If you, if you make your own operating system, whether you're commercial and closed source, whether you're open source and a, a big community thing, it's your right and your prerogative to rewrite things as many times as you want, change things and tweak things as many times as you want. But the reality is computing really isn't being moved forward in most respects. We have added more RAM, we have added more processors, and a few little bits here and there have we actually taken advantage of it, such as what I'm doing with this video right now. Real-time video encoding and compositing at a fairly high resolution. That's interesting. That mostly came out because of the hardware, but that's interesting. So I, I mostly just wanted to kind of point at this a little bit. Because I, I, tend to, I tend to yell at the clouds an awful lot, but I truly, I truly don't understand how so many people can say with a straight face, best, easiest to use file browsing ever with all the modern desktops, unless they've never used what came before. And I wonder if that's the case. I wonder if they either have never used it never use the older systems, or if they just, it has been so long, they simply don't remember that what they're doing now, what they're building now is not any better. And maybe that's okay. Maybe it's okay to build something that's not any better than that. Maybe, maybe this or the Windows File Explorer, or one of the many different files, or Norton Commander. Maybe, maybe many of the old ways of doing it, maybe that was pretty much the height of, of good design for file browsing and many other different types of applications, like the word processing you see here. And maybe the new ones just, you know, iterate on that and just kind of mildly tweak it here and there, and that's fine. If so, just say, you know what? We nailed this already. We nailed this 30 years ago. We're not going to change it. We'll move on to something else now. We'll work on some other part of our system. Maybe do that. Be honest about, <laughs> about the systems that you're building. And shoot, maybe just be honest about your motivation. If you wanted to rewrite the file browser just for the heck of it, just say so. If you wanted to just move a few things around because you just didn't like where a few buttons were located, just say so. It's cool. I'm going to give you a high five for doing it. But easiest file browsing ever? All of you are saying that? Uh-uh. Not buying it. All right. I just had to complain about this a little bit. Also, uh, man, that was, a good, that was a good office suite. That was a good one. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm actually pretty proud of working on that one. That was, that was a pretty good Microsoft Word 2001 and then Microsoft Word X. I, I worked on those and those weren't too bad. It was the last Microsoft Office for OS 9 for Classic and then the first one for Mac OS 10. I worked on those. Oh, those were good days. Those were fun days. All right, everybody. That's it for now. That's enough of me complaining about this for the moment. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes across the tubes, I do declare end broadcast.